Hello guys and welcome! So this is something a little different. I was actually graciously sent a code from SGM Studios to play this game basically. That was kind of the idea. I really wanted to give it a go. I've always been a fan of tower defense games and it was something that looked super interesting. This game is being played on Switch. They did just release on Switch very recently so that is something to look out for if you are an owner of a Switch. Otherwise though this game is available on I believe Windows, Mac, also on iOS, Android, and on Steam in general, so that makes it very accessible. It was released a little while ago on those platforms, but it's been just released on Switch, as I mentioned, which is great. So we're really going to start off on a new game here. I have started playing this a bit just to get a feel for it, to see what it was like, and get an idea on what to do. So I played through about half of what I believe is the full campaign, which is a lot of fun. So we are going to start a new game here. I was playing on normal difficulty going through that. I was thinking of going for hardcore for this playthrough, but we may just stick with normal and maybe do a hardcore mode playthrough if you guys really find this super fun and interesting interesting to watch. So definitely be sure to check the guys who made this out, SG SMG Studios, I will have a link in the description to their Twitter, along with any other links that are relevant for this game, like, you know, links to purchase it and things like that. It is a lot of fun though. Over, over the top tower defense, I believe is the uh, full title. Hence the O-T-T-T-D. Make sure to get that right. So the basic idea, of course, is it's got a pretty basic triple hero system you can run through with three. I'm sure we'll go through that with most of the tutorial here, but the float, you get to name your characters here with a shuffle name, and they've got some really interesting ones, which is a lot of fun, you know. I, I just like to find one that I think fits the character. Shifter, Futron, Futron, Futron? We'll go with that. Is a little bit of fun. This guy is a, kind of a standard marine-style character for a hero, so... So, of course, they run you through the pretty much the basics, you know, left stick, move around, the R, the right stick to kind of zoom. And, of course, you get the HQ, which usually comes with a gun attached each time, so it makes it really easy to start out. So, you can move these guys. So you can re kind of rebalance where you want them to be. And you get a couple of tower locations. I would have preferred it was free tower placement, but tower location placement isn't too bad. They're usually pretty well set out. And of course, some characters like this one, for example, can actually repair things like towers. So this guy's a repairer. I pretty much run him on my playthrough at the moment. He's really quite solid. And you can cycle through towers using the triggers, which is actually pretty cool. Just B to deselect. So it's a pretty standard other than that tower defense gameplay. I've played most of this that I've played so far in handheld mode and it does look really nice on the big screen actually, so not bad. You do also get a few abilities, you can actually change these out later on when you upgrade some skill points. Pretty sweet though. <laughs> and yeah, the humour is on point for sure. You can definitely tell this was made by a Sydney based Australian studio. <laughs> so, fast forward. So you can uh, fast forward like this. I like fast forwarding mechanics, that's perfect. I don't believe there's a way to lock it in though, and you must hold it down to keep doing it, and I don't like that that is actually bound to the right stick personally. That's probably my only gripe of the entire game. I really enjoy all of it, except for the fact that you have to hold that right stick in, especially in something like handheld mode. So we get some XP, yes, a sweet little level 2 engineer. So we can go through now, we're on a skill tree and we can kind of uh, click through and pick what we want. I kind of went a little haywire when I was doing mine initially, but since I've already done it a little bit, I know that I probably want to focus on impact to start with, since that's a really nice option. I also believe it was this skill tree here, Remote Repair, that actually gives you the Repair Tower faster and Repair Tower's um, better sort of thing mechanic. So definitely this side is the two that I want to focus on for most of this playthrough, I reckon. 
and they give you a little bit of information for each thing about the you know hero cult bulletin stuff like that it's actually kind of cool the uh, encyclopedia is great too if you want to check out different things there is also endless mode actually we'll click on that you don't unlock it until you've got at least 39 total stars and I have unlocked the first one on my other playthrough and it's a lot of fun in endless mode although I did find it very hard and it's very easy to accidentally go back too far that's the only other thing it doesn't ask you do you want to um, leave this game but luckily I believe the save is pretty automatic so you don't need to worry about losing your save progress as long as you're not in the middle of a game I believe also, it might be nice if you could zoom out just slightly further, but that's a gripe hole of its own, I think. They're the only, only real things, though. So you've got to take it back so we can place things now. So they want me to build a Gatling Tower, of course. So the first tower they want me to build. Probably want this guy to be reasonably close to it. And then we can pretty much just slay these guys now. And now we actually got a pulse one. So they did give us some for free. They do that occasionally, especially in the tutorial levels. You might start out with one or two towers, especially as you're getting new ones. And you can upgrade your towers. And they have a few different upgrade paths. So you've got your basic kind of upgrade paths and then bigger ones as you go through, which is a lot of fun. And honestly, the character designs are really cool. Like, I mean, a crab with what looks to be a uh, sniper side of weapon is always a really fun one. You can also repair manually, although I'm not a big fan of that system because it's so close to the uh, cash button. So there, is, there is, of course, a few gripes, and I think it's mainly the translation to controller. I think a touchscreen and mouse combo sort of would work better in a lot of senses. Although, for what they've done with it, it's actually still really good. I think they could just move that button around. Maybe move the cash symbol over to another another point on the wheel. That's a little harder to hit. So we might upgrade some of these towers. Get them all as maxed out as we kind of can here. Level There's only three levels usually per upgrade tree. I may consider doing a uh, full-on review of this game once I have you know completely completed it. But I wanted to do a playthrough on the channel for you guys, and just to gauge some interest. If it does well, we'll continue on with it, of course, and we might even get to finish the whole thing. I do, of course, want to expand, so this should be a lot of fun. Again, tower defense games is something I've always enjoyed. So we get a chance to, of course, upgrade again here with skills, so we may as well throw a little bit into mechanic and repair range. Yeah, so these are some of the ones I really like, although I think it might be one of the other ones that actually give me what I want which is actually a range increase and it may be over here so we may have to try and get that unlocked okay so that's the first two done and now we actually get another character Supreme Justice that sounds like this guy so this guy I found was a uh, well it says assault I've primarily found him other than being a good tank he's really good at actually healing healing up so I usually use him as my healer I haven't messed around with too many heroes overall though, so it should be a new experience once we get past the first three. I might try and uh, mix and match a different guy into my combination here. So we've got a shock tower now. And they are going to have to come around this bend, so probably best to uh, mantle a tower on either side of here. Set this guy up kind of uh, in the middle. I like to use him as a barricade. Alright. So, like I said, you can cycle through different things. So, heroes can actually be cycled through using the uh, L and R top buttons. And ZL and ZLR, of course, is the towers. Personally, though, I like using my uh, arrow keys to cycle through heroes. You can literally just use them to correspond top, side, down, which is really handy. So, you can quickly activate abilities and such, like this guy's, which is great. So we can, of course, beat most of these, which is good. I may actually upgrade that shock tower. It might be a good idea. Get him up to a two-stage shock tower. Alright, so this is definitely not good. As you can see, I wanted to show off the base, of course, how it takes some damage. Optimally, you want to take none, of course. Taking none would be best. But we might just allow these to kind of uh, pump through these early stage guys and get them done.
And we're almost done with the stage, which is good. Get a few upgrades in here. And that should round out our three major towers that we're using right now. Of course, you can come back to these modes and replay them to get better scores. So you can try and go for three stars. I do find that some cases that's the best thing to do. Sometimes you're better off uh, re-grabbing the missions when you can. Especially since it does have RPG elements with the whole uh, level up system. There's also a weapon system as well where you can swap out weapons and armor and stuff like that that you purchase. So that's actually really cool and in-depth. So there's a lot of uh, strategy you can put in, which is nice. If you're a fan of really any kind of uh, major tower defense game, I am sure you'd enjoy this one. So I do find, see, I'm using a uh, fast forward quite a bit. Because if you just let it kind of go, it's nice for the visual, but not so nice when you want to kind of uh, go right at it. And of course, they do a really nice job of allowing you to zoom right in on things. To get a good look at some of these epic characters they did design. Alright, and that's going to be that mission done. So we managed to get the uh, double level up. Whenever you get initially a character leveled up like that, it does give you the chance to go to, of course, the skill. So heal wave, if you need to heal your team, I personally focus on that usually, going with the heal wave initially. That's why I'm probably not going to spend any points right here on his character, since there isn't much point. And we might try and get through woods for this episode. For this part of the playthrough. We'll see how we go. So we'll get our tank in the front of course. We'll back him up with a little bit of support here. And then we just have to set up a couple of decent towers to really, really close this out for us. So I think if we set it up like this, we should be fine. You can obviously skip the initial countdown using the negative button, which is good. Eyeballs. Oh, not my favorite thing to, to go up against, to be honest. Because of the way they um, duplicate. And some of the, the designs are really cool. I mean, the glasses ones that I believe have a little bit stronger defenses are a lot of fun. Alright, so there goes those. They still haven't... They've dealt no damage to our base, which is positive. Ideally, though, we want to make sure we're going to be reasonably secure. Ooh, zombies. They have got three level designs, I believe. So the first ones are like beach-style crab and, you know, aqua-based ones. Then you've got, of course, the uh, nightmare zones, which are the more horrific monsters. May have to move this guy off the field a little bit. No, we just want to get that to 8. There we go. So we are going to take some damage. I probably don't have the best layout for this, although these towers do a really nice job of cleanup. I may have to actually put in another one. They are really quite good. Alright, there we go. I believe we still have to upgrade the other towers as well. I might put this guy over this side right now, and we'll give him a nice little uh, heal up. Wow, oh, sorry, I don't have heal enabled yet, do I? Got to remember what I've got actually enabled. Um, we'll kill this though. We'll wipe these out. That should be pretty comfortable. And they're almost done. I think now that our setup's pretty fine, we can actually just go ahead and upgrade these anyway. It's not really going to make a huge difference. We should be able to pretty easily eradicate most of these. Although these slimes are still real powerhouses. Okay. As I said, coming back to this becomes a little easier. Although it looks like we might actually lose. Jeez, it'll be close. Oh, not quite, I reckon. I reckon we got it. There we go. Just clearing the mission. 
Again, with a little bit better layout and planning, and again, coming back to these, it makes it a lot easier to clear these at level 3, but as long as you can get through that initial clear, you're usually going to be pretty right in the beginning. So as I mentioned, you can purchase weapons, which is what we've actually unlocked now. Once you get enough coin, you can unlock purchasable weapon sets. So, obviously the higher you go, the better the stats, you can mix and match those. There is, like I mentioned, armor as well that you can go through. And really it's just a matter of what you need and how you want to lay them out. Personally, I'm aiming for Bree, Bree suits mostly when I'm playing through normal playthrough for the XP and the gold. If you can get triple Bree suit set up on your main team, I guess it makes it much easier to uh, farm out other things that you might need. So now that we've unlocked this, we can actually get the healing wave before we round this out. Reload. Maybe it wasn't on this side. Either way, there's definitely a um, lot of things to aim for when you're looking at these skill trees. Now, as I mentioned, you can kind of go right through here and go right up to something like Repair Wave, which is actually really cool. So I really just want to kind of unlock whatever I can here to kind of uh, show it off. So that's a HQ Defend and things like that. So definitely a lot of fun. If you guys are de looking for something, I definitely recommend playing this. It's a reasonably cheap indie game as far as they go on Switch. I believe it's $10 Australian, which is extremely respectable pricing for such a game it does a wonderful job and honestly you could easily get hours and hours out of this game so I highly recommend checking it out if you get the opportunity as it's definitely worth the purchase in my opinion so hopefully if you guys enjoyed this we'll be able to continue on and do a little bit more with it so until next time guys see ya